Um, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I hope you talked to somebody about Jesus this week. And if you didn't, well, let's try to do better next week. Okay. Anybody here on time reading your Bible through? Okay. Um, if you were reading the schedule that I published in the email, uh, you would have come across the answers to these trivia questions. And uh, the first one, Isaiah tells us that every knee and every tongue are going to do something. They're going to take some action someday. What will they do? Every knee and every tongue. Will bow and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And then over in the New Testament, we have uh, a fill in the blank. My old self has been blank. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In the, the King James Version, it says, I have been crucified. crucified with Christ. Yes, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Okay, then here, uh, 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 back in the Old Testament, how beautiful on the mountain are the blank of the messenger who brings good news. How beautiful on the mountain are what piece of the anatomy? How beautiful on the mountain are the feet. the feet. Yes, the feet of the messenger who brings good news. Hey, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, probably not. All right, so we're in John chapter 18, and... Uh, this is Jesus' trial. There are five phases of the trial. We read about the first one last week. You'd like to see if that answers. <laughs> uh, so five phases of the trial. We've already seen the first one uh, last week where Jesus was brought before Annas, the high priest, and now he's uh, uh, being uh, taken from Annas to Caiaphas, and his uh, uh, trial there is just ending as we get to verse 28. So in, uh, we're going to read uh, 28, somebody read for us 28 through 32, the first section of John chapter 18. 28 through 32. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Capias to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. And then the rest of the passage from 33 through 38. Somebody read that for us. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? It was his people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. 38? Yes, 38. What is, what is truth, Paula asked. 
With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. Okay. Um, this is the beginning of the, uh, the day that Jesus was crucified. So, uh, verse 28 of John chapter 18 tells us that Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Well, we know that by nine o'clock, he's already on the cross. So this is, this is very early. This started at some point after midnight with the, the, the trial before Annas, then Annas sent him over to Caiaphas. Um, so now these guys weren't surprised by this. They, were, they didn't have to be rustled out of bed to get up and do this because they had conferred with Judas and they knew Jesus was going to be coming out of that garden uh, as a prisoner and brought before them. So they were, they were ready, they were awake, they were waiting on this moment. Uh, because they thought they had orchestrated all of this when in fact it was Jesus who was in control the whole time. So it ended, uh, the trial with Caiaphas, phase two, uh, ended early in the morning. Uh, then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. Okay, so you have your pecking order, you have uh, uh, the troops and the military leaders, then you have your administrators in the Roman system. You have the governor uh, of the area uh, who reports to the emperor in Rome. So here's the governor. Um, and they, uh, they have brought Jesus to the governor. Uh, the accusers the priests did not go inside. <laughs> isn't, isn't this amazing? They didn't want to go inside so they'd be defiled. Uh, they would have done something wrong to go into a Gentile's home. Uh, they had absolute disdain for the Gentiles. And as you'll see in a moment, that attitude was given back to them from the Romans. Okay? But they didn't go inside to defile themselves, but yet they were guilty of something much greater than that. What was it that they were guilty of? Accusing Jesus. They, they're, they're, they're trying to get Jesus killed, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, an innocent man, they know he's innocent except for their attitude toward blasphemy that they think he has committed, which of course he has not. Uh, but they are trying to commit murder and at the same time, oh, we gotta keep the law. <laughs> we gotta keep the rules. We don't wanna defile ourselves before Passover. My word, no, wouldn't that would be awful. So they didn't go inside because it would defile them and they wouldn't be able to celebrate the Passover so Pilate, in order to accommodate them, comes outside. Now this, remember, this is very early in the morning. What do you think Pilate is thinking when they're knocking on his door saying, hey, Gov, we got a problem here. We need you to, to, to settle for us. We got this man we want to murder and we got to give, give, give him over to y'all so you do it. Um, and now Pilate is probably roused out of bed and he comes and he comes out to see them. Uh, how do you feel when you're unexpectedly roused out of bed early in the morning? Hmm? Not happy. No, not happy. I can imagine Pilate was probably feeling the same way. Unless, unless as a part of the plot, they had told uh, 
uh, pilot, you be expecting us. We're going to be coming early, and we're going to be bringing a criminal for you to pass judgment on. Um, but uh, in any event, Pilate shows up at the door, and he goes out, and he asks them for the charges against the prisoner. And he says, what is your charge against this man? Um, and verse 30 is an interesting study in political doublespeak. Um, because what they say to him is, we wouldn't have handled him over to handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal. I, I, I can just see Pilate, big eye roll at this moment. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> you got me up early and you don't even have a charge to bring against this guy? Um, um, so here, Pilate throws it back at him. He says, then you take him and judge him by your own law. Um, so then they, then they say to, uh, 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 to, to Pilate, only the Romans are permitted to execute someone. Okay, so they've already, in their own minds, passed judgment. On Jesus, he deserves to die, but they have to get the Romans to do it because the uh, under Roman law, the Jews had some liberty to adjudicate their own cases, but they couldn't uh, uh, execute anyone. Well, apparently that changed sometime right after this because you remember Stephen. Stephen was uh, the first uh, martyr. As a matter of fact, he was preaching Jesus when they all came around him and stoned him to death. They didn't turn him over to the Romans. Um, but, but think for a moment what would have happened if Jesus had been stoned to death instead of crucified. What do you think the implications of that would have been? Stoning rather than crucifixion. Well, back in Rome, uh, back in John chapter eight, he said he was going to be lifted up. Mm -hmm. If he had been stoned, he couldn't have been the Messiah, because he said he was going to be lifted up, uh, indicating what kind of death he was going to die. And every word he ever spoke was true, and had to be true. So he, uh, uh, they couldn't stoning because it wasn't a part of the plan and he was orchestrating all of this anyway so um, they say to, they say to Pilate only the Romans are permitted to execute someone the, the Jewish leaders replied and this was a part of the fulfillment of Jesus prediction about how he would die. He said he was going to be lifted up. He was going to be on a cross. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Um, so Pilate has got to be uh, getting a little short-tempered with these games that the religious leaders are playing at this point. So he goes back into his house and he called for Jesus, and Jesus was brought in. Was Jesus defiled by going into the Gentiles' house? Hmm? No. No. Not at all. No. That was one of their made-up rules that they had at the time. Had nothing to do with truth or, or sin or righteousness. So Jesus is brought into the governor's quarters and um, there, just remember, Jesus is always in control. So he is there um, uh, and he brings, uh, Pilate brings Jesus in. Pilate thinks he's going to be the judge over Jesus 
Who, who's really on trial here in these moments? It's Pilate. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Jesus has nothing to be judged for. And as God of the universe, he's in control. So he's the one that is, uh, 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 or I should say, Pilate is the one that's on trial here in these moments. He doesn't realize it until later, but I'm sure he realized it at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so he comes in and he asks uh, uh, Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? So I ask you, is Jesus the king of the Jews? Hmm? Absolutely, he is. Uh, by the way, who are the Jews? Hmm? How, how does one find himself being a Jew? Wasn't it the Legion God and Jesus? Well, there, there is that. There are those that are proselytized over to, to Judaism. But someone that is born a Jew, how did they happen to be born a Jew? Well, they were a descendant of Abraham, um, of the 12 tribes. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then the 12 uh, uh, children that he had all make up the, uh, the nation of, of the Jews. So he says, are you the king of the Jews? Now, Pilate thinks he's the governor over the Jews and any Gentiles that happened to be there in Israel at the time. And so Jesus love this. Jesus answers his question with a question. So he says, is this your question? In other words, what is it that you want to know? What do you want to know? Um, is this your questions or did somebody else tell you this about me? <clears throat> oh, you can just hear the the, uh, uh, the acrimony in his response here. Am I a Jew? No. And, and listen, his attitude toward the Jews, where they were, uh, they were less than human in his eye. The Romans had the superior place in the uh, in the world, and the Jews uh, just subjects, just subjects. You know, it never says that Pilate uh, asked who this man was. So apparently he already knew who Jesus was. Good point. You know, oh, yeah. It never Good says point. anything yeah. in here. It never says, who is this man that you brought to me? It's just like, then he starts asking him immediately, are you the king of the Jews? So, yeah. You know, he had heard of me, but obviously, yeah. you know. So they probably had that same discussion with him before bringing Jesus before him. Yeah. Yeah. They must have, yeah. They had, listen, these guys were masters at political intrigue. They had prepped Pilate. Okay. So that's this. Why you, you got you to expect that they had prepped Pilate. Yeah. We're going to be bringing you this guy, Jesus. You've heard about him, how he's done miracles, how he, he, he ran all of our people out of the temple twice. Uh, over the last three years. And he's probably heard all the stories, like all the things that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, he, he would have to have heard the stories. Yeah. Yeah, because of uh, the, the miraculous things he did, especially yeah. raising Lazarus from the dead mm -hmm. just a few days prior to this. So uh, you're right. He didn't ask him who he was. Uh, but he did ask him if he was the king of the Jews. So Pilate spits out this vitriol, uh, am I a Jew? As if to say, how could you even think such a thing? Uh, your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why, he says. Why did they bring you to me? What have you done? What have you done? What had, what had Jesus done? 
Hmm? What did he do that upset them so much? What did he do? He was doing miracles that they couldn't explain. He was doing made miracles. question mm -hmm. their own faith and what was happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, he also claimed to be somebody. But did he though? He always said, who do you think I am? Or no, I he, am. He, he, well, yeah, he said, I am. He, he, he yeah. said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. yeah. He said, uh, before Abraham was, I am. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was the thing that really uh, crinkled their Fritos. Uh, <laughs> it was, he rocked their world. That's, that's why they wanted to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because they wanted things to go back to the way they were before he showed up. They were the masters of the religious system. They were in control, and they were afraid of him in the sense that if people began to follow them, follow Jesus instead of them, then their power would go away. Their control of people's lives would go away. So, listen, power is, is a terrible thing. Uh, Lord Acton got it right. He says, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, so, so, but, but it, is, it is power that they were uh, trying to protect. Um, so, uh, what have you done was Pilate's question to him. And... Jesus deals with him, and I think in, in, in a way that uh, goes to the heart of who he was and what his questions really were and what the, the, the desires of his heart were. Jesus has a way of doing that when he's dealing with somebody. And remember who's on trial here. It's not Jesus. It's Pilate. So Jesus tells him, he says, what have you done? And then Jesus goes back to the first question that Pilate asked him. Are you the king of the Jews? So then Jesus answers in verse 36, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. Okay, let's talk about a kingdom for a second. Uh, in order to have a kingdom, what are the necessary parts to have a kingdom? You gotta have a king. You gotta have a king. You gotta have a king. Okay, what else? Subjects. You've got to have subjects. And then there's a third piece. Power. The realm. The realm. Okay. Uh, what, whatever geography or whatever constitutes the area that the king is over. Okay. So you have the king, the subjects, and the realm. So here he, he's trying to explain that to Pilate. Um, and, and Pilate is... Uh, not realizing that Jesus is dealing with him directly and specifically in these moments and how Jesus is the one that's in control and not power. So he says, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. Okay, so what does that mean? My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. It's not an earth. It's heavenly. It's heavenly? Okay, how about it's not confined to this terrestrial ball, okay? Um, it includes that, but it's really the seat of power is somewhere else. And that seat of power is in heaven. And what you see is not my kingdom. What is his kingdom if what you see is not his kingdom? Unseen. The unseen. Us, our spirits, our souls. Uh, we are, those of us who believe in Jesus, we are a part of that kingdom. So it's not an earthly kingdom. And he said, it's not like the kingdom of Caesar. It's not like the kingdom of Alexander the Great. It's not like the kingdom of King Herod. It's not an earthly 
kingdom is not structured like that. Um, and he says, if it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. Now, he's, he's going back to the source of this prosecution against him. It's not the Romans that are bringing the case. It's the Jewish leaders. So he, he would, he's saying that if my kingdom was an earthly kingdom, then my subjects would fight. So he's the king. His subjects would fight if it were an earthly kingdom. Uh, he says, but my kingdom is not of this world. As a matter of fact, we are only here temporarily. We are only passing through this place. Uh, we're going somewhere else. There's somewhere else that's home where we're ultimately going. Uh, Pilate said, so you are a king. Oh, and the, the way I, I heard a commentary say, uh, I read uh, or heard this said about this particular saying, so you are a king. A king? So you're a king? Um, is the way that, that it is, is represented. And then Jesus said, you say I'm a king. Actually, I was born and came into this world. To testify to the truth. Now he's going to the heart here of the matter with Pilate. We're going to expand on this next week. But in, in, in what Jesus is saying, I was born and came into this world. In Isaiah, and I think my trivia, one of the trivia questions last week was um, a child is born. And we'll, we'll hear it, you'll hear it a thousand times over Christmas, where Isaiah says, a child is born, a son is given. A child was born there in that stable, but the son was given, okay? The son existed before that stable. The son existed before uh, the world was created. So the child was born, the son was given, uh, Think on that for a bit. So this is what, and Jesus is actually saying the same thing here. He says, I was born, but the main thing was, this, this human body was born here, but I came into this world from somewhere else. So where was that somewhere else that he came from? Heaven. Heaven. Mm -hmm. The very throne room. Mm -hmm. With the Father and the Holy Spirit and going back all the way to the beginning, wherever that was, whenever that was, if there ever was one, um, I came into this world to testify to something. What did he come to testify about? According to this verse? The truth. The truth. The truth. There are universities all over the world that claim they're searching for truth, but none of them really are. They're searching for unity in diversity, university, okay, rather than truth. Um, to testify to the truth, what Jesus said about the truth earlier in John, I am the way, the truth, the truth and the life. If you find Jesus, you find the truth. Okay, if you, if you accept Jesus as your Savior, then you know the truth. You, and Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Set you free. That's right. Um, so all those who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. Now, Jesus has just penetrated Pilate's heart his heart of hearts. And he knows the struggle that Pilate has had with this subject. And I, I just, you know, you know that, that Jesus is speaking to a person's need when he's dealing with, with, with a person one-on-one. -on -one. So then Pilate expresses this question that has plagued him. What is truth? 
And that is a question that plagues acad academics today. Um, what is true? And there are many out there will uh, get on a band stand and say there is no absolute truth. It's all relative, but we know better. Um, so what is truth? Pilate asked, and then he went out again. Hey, guys, I find no guilt in this man. I, I, I just imagine, I just imagine that Pilate is saying, how did he know? How did he know that that is my struggle? That that is my question? What is truth? Well, we're going to, we're going to get into this more next week under the subject of what is truth. So we're going to drill down there next week. I hope you'll, you'll be a part of that too. Uh, thank you for all of you who are, are, are watching online uh, we love you and appreciate you especially leaving a message to let us know that uh, that you're there. Those those mean a lot to me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for truth. Thank you that we can know the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, that you bring life into um, our emptiness. You bring life into our brokenness. You bring life into our waywardness. We are so grateful. Now, Lord, we pray that you would help us be about the business of sharing this good news with other folks in the coming days. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.